Welcome back everyone. So today's question is from J2021 and this is from the topic of thermodynamics. So this is a passage type question. So this is based on ideal gas equation and the first law of thermodynamics. So try this problem out for like 5-10 minutes and then check out the solution. So the problem statement is, so we have a thermally insulating cylinder that has a thermally insulating and frictionless movable partition in the middle. Okay, so what thermally insulating essentially means is that let's say we take a point over here, there won't be any heat transfer from inside to the outside basically. Let's say the temperature inside is let's say some T1 and let's say the temperature in the surroundings is Ts. Now obviously there is incentive for some heat transfer because there is a temperature difference but because of the insulation there won't be any heat transfer. So that's what the first line essentially means and it's, it goes and it's the same for the middle partition as well. So essentially if you observe the right side of the chamber it is basically there won't be any heat transfer through the boundary layer of the right side. Right. Essentially, we can also say that the thermodynamic process going on in the right chamber is adiabatic. Anyway, so we have on each side of the partition, there is one mole of an ideal gas uh, with constant volume specific heat as 2R. Initially, each side uh, has a volume of V0 and temperature T0. The left side has an electric heater, which is turned on at a very low power to transfer heat Q to the gas on the left side. As a result, the partition moves slightly slowly towards the right, reducing the right side volume to V0 by 2. So, so in the final situation, the right side volume is given to be V0 by 2. Consequently, the gas temperatures on the left side and the right side changes, becomes TL and TR, and we have to ignore the change in temperature of the cylinder, heater, and the partition. So in the first question, we essentially have to find the temperature of the right chamber. And in the second question, we have to find the amount of heat transferred to the left chamber. Okay, so let's begin with the discussion. Okay, guys, so let's say this is how situation is looking initially. So now the thing is, uh, as I explained in the previous slide, so the dotted lines that I have drawn represents the boundary of our system, which in this case is an ideal gas, right? Now, the thing is, on the right chamber, as all of the boundary layers are actually made up of thermally insulating materials, it means that no heat is not allowed to be transferred in or out from the boundary layers. So we can say that for the right chamber, the heat transfer is zero from our boundary layers. Or in other words, we can say that the thermodynamic process is adiabatic. Okay, okay guys, so uh, now finally, the, it's given that the volume of the right chamber becomes V0 by 2. So obviously this uh, volume of this chamber becomes 3 V0 by 2. Let's call the temperature on the right chamber as TR and let's call the temperature on the left chamber as TL. So as for the first question, we have to determine what the value of TR is and for that we can use the equation for an adiabatic process and that is PV power gamma is a constant. The value of CV was given to be 2R in the question. So we can find the value of Cp using Mayer's relation. So that is simply Cv plus R. And this comes out to be 3R, which means the gamma for the gas is simply Cp by Cv. So it would be equal to 3 by 2. Now the ideal gas equation says that Pv has to be equal to nRT. So the pressure, we can say it is proportional to T by V. And if I substitute it over here, then we can say T times V to the power gamma minus 1 has to be a constant. So, okay, so now we can apply this for the right chamber. Initially, the temperature was T0 and the volume was V0. And finally, the temperature is what we want is let's say it's TR and the volume is V0 by 2. And after solving this, we'll get the value of TR as square root of 2 times T0. So they wanted the ratio, so the answer is going to be option A. So now we have to determine the heat transfer Q into our left chamber. So now as we have to find the heat transfer, so we are going to be using the first law of thermodynamics. So that basically says that the heat transfer into our system, this has to be equal to the change in internal energy of the gas present in the system, plus the work done on the boundaries. Now, in order to find delta U, we need the change in temperature of the left side. We don't really know what is the exact process happening on the left side. So we can use the ideal gas equation though, but for that we need the pressure as well, right? So how do we determine the pressures? So we know that the moving piston is in equilibrium here, so which means the forces has to be balanced. And in order for the forces to be balanced, the pressure from the left has to be equal to the pressure from the right. Now we're using the fact that the pressure on either of the chambers has to be the same. We can write down N R T by V is a constant. And as you can see, the number of moles is going to be one. So they cancel. V L by V R is going to be three, right? So, and from here we'll get the temperature on the left chamber is basically three times the temperature on the right chamber. So that is going to be three root two times T naught. Now, as we know that initial temperature and the final temperature, we can easily determine Delta U. Uh, now let's talk about the work. So is first of all, is there any work being done on our left system? And the answer to that is yes, because as you can see, this boundary layer over here, uh, it is moving towards the right, right? 
it. So for us to say that work is being done on a system, two conditions have to be met. First is that there must be a force acting on the boundary layer and also the boundary has to move. And in this particular situation, both of them are true and hence some work is being done on our system. In fact, it's the system that is actually doing our work because it is expanding, right? So it's as good as saying, the gas itself is performing some work. Now the question is, how do I determine it? So one way of determining it is that if I find out the pressure, do a PDV integral, but this is gonna take a lot of time, right? Because we have to find a pressure as a function of volume. You can actually do something else. So we know that the expansion work that our gas on the left side does on the piston is the same work that the piston does to compress the gas on the right chamber. So we can use first law in the right chamber actually. So we know that the heat transfer from our system on the right is zero. The change in internal energy is going to be N CV delta T and W is a work interaction due to the piston. So let's write it as W piston. So from here, we get W piston. Now the number of moles is one, CV is two R. Final temperature is root two T naught. Initially it was T naught. So it is going to be root two minus one times T naught. Now the negative sign indicates that work is being done on the system and, and as we can see that work is being done by the piston on the system. So for the left chamber, work done on the boundary layer uh, is going to be negative of W piston, right? So that is twice of root two minus one times R T naught. So for the left chamber, as work is being done by the system, we have a positive sign. Now finally we have the work done. So now all we need is the delta U. So the delta U is simply N times delta T and finally it was three root two T naught. So it is three root two minus one T naught. So, and after substituting it into our first law, we'll get the heat as four times two root two minus one times R T naught. We need the answer for Q by R T naught. So that'll come out to be option. So that was it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, please do like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any doubts, you can comment down below. And that's it. Thanks for watching.